What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, the founder of the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very, very excited today to be joined in my Zoom virtual studio with the one and only Michael Jaco. Now, Michael does not need an introduction, but for those of you who are not paying attention to me and my other world, Michael is a 24-year decorated U.S. Navy SEAL, former, excuse me, also 12-year CIA analyst, high-level uh, remote viewer, intuitive, literally an amazing guy, all that you know, decorated stuff that he had in the United States military serving the U.S. government. And he's also pretty much like a shamanic master or healer now, kind of how I think of him. Robert Stanley and I just did a podcast with him, which was probably the best podcast that him and I together have ever done. And now it's me and him going deep one-on-one. So dude, with all that said, man, Michael Jaco, welcome to the Jay Campbell podcast, man. How are you? Uh, great. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for having me, Jay. It's an honor. Thank you. It's just an honor for me to talk to you, man. And again, you know, Michael's also an author, guys. Um, his book, um, what is it, Intuition? I forget. The Intuitive Warrior. The Intuitive Warrior. Amazing book. Uh, already ripped through it. It's on Amazon. You know, I'll link to it in the podcast, but definitely highly recommend you guys. Uh, Michael's one of us, but, you know, again, he's also a guy who was a formerly, you know, high-level brainwashed, super, you know, min- military grunt, you know, I mean, at the highest levels. And now he's like just super consciously aware. And he's like, I mean, again, dude, just, it's an honor, man. I, I have so much respect and love in my heart for you. So, before we jump in, as always, of course, on the Jay Campbell podcast, because we can go a lot of different directions, man, like talk a little bit about your awakening. You know, how did it start? When did it start? Was it starting to happen while you were, you know, being quote unquote given drills and given instructions or did, did it happen more later? Yeah, I, I think it happened. Uh, well, I don't think it definitely happened when I was going through the training itself. So there's, uh, there was one little section in Hell Week where you're up pretty much uh, for a whole week. And in there, they put you in cold water. And I was having a lot of trouble with the cold water because of really low um, uh, body fat percentage and sure. you know, just shaking all the time. So I would, <laughs> I would gather around all the other guys and we like keep each other warm. And, and so the instructors have a, a way of knowing what's your weekend. So they singled me out, put me in the water by myself. And so I went in there, I just made that conscious decision, you know, I don't care what it takes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work through this. So I went out there. And I just like went into this calmness, you know, and then I was able to like, you know, just sit there, no shake, no nothing. The instructor was like looking at me like, well, I guess he's got it. And then they pulled me out from that point on, it was never a problem. So that conscious state right there just started to increase, you know, and everything. Of course, that's buds. We call that the basic underwater demolition seal training. Once I went into the teams, it was like on another level, obviously. And then when I went to seal team six, which is like our creme de la creme, of the SEAL teams, then it was on another level again. And that's where I had combat action and stuff like that. So I was always, you know, improving myself. I started the first hand-to-hand program, the first uh, climbing course. So always pushing the envelope. And then when I got, I got out, made a decision to get out, I went on that shamanic journey even deeper. And then I started to uh, go into these realms where I was remote viewing, remote influencing and so forth. So I went into the CIA and, you know, just took it to like this crazy level. And uh, so, I mean, everyone has that ability within them. And that's kind of what I like to teach and what you're trying to share as well. So that's a, that's a great start. So, so going back to, if, you're, if we're okay with it, and obviously, if, you know, if I ask questions you can't answer, you know, just tell me, hey, man, I can't tell you that answer. But, you know, in buds, like you were what, 22, 23 years old at that point? How old were you? What, what's beautiful about it is uh, I came in at 18, right when I turned 18, yeah. I went through um, uh, hard hat diving. So that big old hard hat sure. helmet yeah. back in the old days, I, I wore that, went through that train. I thought that would give me the edge and it kind of did. So when I went through Hell Week, the day Hell Week started was my birthday, 21st birthday. Wow. 
it was like the best president I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> what a maniac. <laughs> oh, totally, totally. That's right. But I mean, that's true, man. I mean, you don't make it um, into any form of special forces, let alone the U.S. Navy SEALs, um, unless you're completely dedicated, driven, like, you know, you are, you have a wire missing, right? Like your wire is like, I am going to make it happen no matter what. And that's, that's absolutely right, Jay, because I was like, I will die before I don't make, I will, I will die. They will have to kill me. I will, whatever happens, I'll drown or whatever it is. But yeah, so right. you have to have that kind of dedication. And I came back as an instructor and I could see that in guys, you know? So just like the, you know, instructors push me, I was the guy that was pushing. I could see, you know, where someone was weak. I'd push on them. Uh, they'd either go away or they like to work through it. So I could, I could see a whole class if they weren't getting it together, you know, cause it's all about teamwork. So I would like mold a whole class and we had classes that were just amazing. Some classes I hammered all the way through, you know, and the guys came back, I'd see them in the teams later and they're like, Oh my God, you're like, you're insane. I was like, well, look at you now, you know, like you're like, you're, you're a stud in the team. So, you know, it makes a difference. You know, you really have to get hammered really to go to those different realms. Now, no, yeah. most of us just aren't going to go there on our own, you know? So, well, uh, I mean, honestly, like I, as I told you off air, you know, when we were talking a week ago, when we first really truly met and I, and there's no doubt that you and I have served missions together in past lives. There's no doubt we would not be disconnected, but and I've said that to other guys that in, in, you know, in the special forces, because I, as I told you, I have like, that's my whole phone is like guys like you. And, nice. and obviously I've never served in the military in this incarnation or whatever, but mm -hmm. um, I always had this question. I've never had a chance to ask, especially a SEAL Team 6 guy like you, but like the guys that washed out, and obviously I know you have to have remembers, memories of some of them, right? Like mm -hmm. were some of those guys like worthy, but something just inexplicably or unfortunately happened, right? Because I've heard the stories from other guys of guys that literally their leg snapped into or some shit, right? Oh yeah. Talk about that. Talk about those guys that you felt like, man, it just wasn't the right place at the right time. Well, you know, what, what's amazing is we had guys who were coming in. I was like, this guy's going to crush it. And they'd be the first to quit. And wow. I was like, what, what is that? And then when I came back, I'm like looking at guys, I, I'd be like, this guy, and I even tell, right. I, I tell the class, this guy is going to like crush it, you know, and then he'd be the first quit. And I was like, what is that? And we had professional athletes that were coming sure. in that were quitting. It's because they were never, they were never pushed to an unbelievable level. Yeah. So for a lot of us that were coming in there, even though, you know, I had a, an incredible sports background, you know, soccer, football, everything, sure. always, you know, lifeguard, always swimming, always push myself it was nothing compared to what we went through in buds. So when I started to have to uh, push, you know, have, having to dig deep, you know, it was something that I knew that I was, like I said, I had that attitude that nothing was going to stop me. You know, Every, I knew at five years old, I want to be a Navy SEAL. So from that point on, sure. I was conditioning myself for it. So you would see the guys that would come in, it's like, they're naturally gifted. They're like, yeah, we're going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crush hell week, you know, and then they're the first to quit because they had never, really push them so they're naturally gifted sure 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 so for guys like me that had to like struggle and dig deep you know their whole lives then it was just another super challenge you know for them it was like oh my god i'm having to be i'm having to dig deep i can't oh i'm out you know so yeah. i saw that over and over again it was it was tragic because you can see the potential in people sure but you never know what's deep inside and i would look at guys and i'd be like this guy's gonna crush it and that guy, he's going to be, he's going to be gone. And those guys that I thought were going to be gone were the ones that went all the way. Wow. You know, like, wow. Did you, did you stay, last question on that, but did you stay friends with anybody who didn't make it? Cause I would assume that you wouldn't, but I, I don't know. Oh yeah. In fact, um, this is, this is tragic. This happened actually a couple of times. Um, I remember as an instructor, same thing. There was one guy that was like, he was just trying to be like Superman through everything. It was like hurting himself and, you know, and he get rolled back. Just literally give up their bodies, bro, because I'm going to be a fucking seal. Exactly. But they're like just hurting themselves. It's like, dude, you need to pace yourself. So I, he was like crushing it through the O course one time. And I was at the top of the O course. I like had the bullhorn. I'm like motivating yeah. everybody, you know, my thing. And he got to the top. He said, stop. He's like, you're not going to be a doctor or anything. I just need to talk to you right now. It's like, you need to like, Take chill the easy. fuck out. Yeah, chill the fuck out. 
and make it. Through. So he finally made it through first phase. He made it through first phase the first time. So then he gets to the second phase and he, and he goes like batshit crazy again, hurts himself. So it's like a second or third time he hurt himself, you know? So he went to the fleet. So he goes to the fleet and he, I'm like, I'm trying to communicate with him. He's like, yeah, you know, stay with it. You know, you're going to be good. He commits suicide. Holy yeah. shit, dude. Yeah. So, you know, it really affects some people because, you know, they're, you know, they're so committed and they, like, I was trying to help him. Like, come on. you got. Just, did he shoot himself? How did he do it? Uh, I, I never heard, but uh, I guess, you know, and that happened like that I know of a couple of different times. So same thing. There was another guy that was coming through that was, ha that had pushed himself in hell week and he needed to get rolled back because he was hurt. So the guy, every class has uh, what we call a proctor who basically sure. kind of like the, you know, takes care of class. And um, uh, their proctor came up to me. I knew him really well. It was a corpsman. And I uh, says, Hey, Hey Mike, you know, this, this guy, um, this is the only family he's ever had. He says oh, his, his dad, like, you know, just abused him, locked him in closets and all kind of crazy stuff. And I'm like, <sighs> He, he will be crushed if we send if we send him back. And I'm like, yeah, just, just roll him then. Just keep, keep him moving. So we just, I would do that occasionally with, for guys, you know, that's we awesome, off, man. That yeah. There was, knew that. yeah. And there was an officer one time that was having a struggle. His guys were helping him and we're like, have him come over here. And they're like, no, no, no. Cause he had helped everybody. Yeah. Cause they wanted to protect him. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And we're like, get away. And I was like, get away. You know? So, you know, I had that, that voice. And uh, so we, me and another corpsman, that same, another guy that we'd worked with SEAL Team 6, we we're like looking at him, we're like looked at each other, and we're like, you know, he can probably make it. We're just going to let, if, if he continues on another mile on this run, it will break. So we like pulled him in, we're like, Fuck. we're checking him out, you know, but we're not telling him. We're checking him out and like, all right, so you're probably going to be okay. Just take it easy, you know, otherwise we're going to have to roll you. So we put him back in the class. He made it all the way through the class and became an amazing officer in the team. So nice. You know, guys that push deep, dig within themselves, you can see that and you, you can give them a little help sometime. It's rare that I would do that. But if I see someone extraordinary, I would help them. That's awesome. But man. if That's... I saw, if I saw guys that are like, you know, working the system, you know, on the log PT, I'd come up and I like, I can see some light up there. You know, and I'd slap their hand away. I'm like, I just, I'd crush them, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's, there's a difference between the guys that are trying to work the system and the guys that are really digging deep. And that's what you want. The guys that dig unbelievably deep, those are the guys that are going to be amazing. And like you said, like some of those guys, because of, for whatever reason, you could give me a million, but we don't need to talk about it. They need a push. Yeah. But it takes a guy like you, and you probably didn't even have, you weren't even tapped into your intuitive powers at that point, even though you had them, right? Because we're born with them. Right? Oh, yeah. You just come into physical and get all that density and bullshit that we'll talk about. But you probably at that point, without even knowing it, were tapping into your intuitive powers that you had, which are extraordinary, to know that that person was worthy, but he needed that little tiny cheat code bump, whatever you gave him, you know, to get Absolutely. there because you knew, you knew, you just knew. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And then on the other side of that, you know, the guys are like, you know, just aren't reaching that level, but you can like really, you know, help them by pushing them. And, and I would do that, you know, even on the other side. So that's like trying to push people into their amazingness. So would you say then, cause that's a great point. Would you say then, as long as a guy was given 150%, 150% of the fucking time, right. they would make it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's and awesome. on top of that, I had another guy that when I was a proctor, and uh, he came up to me. He was like, he was like, almost crying, you know. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I was like, I can't deal with this. But you know, so anyway, for this one time, I listened. And he's like, Chief, you know, it's like, uh, I got the shin splints, blah blah blah. And I was like, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna share it with him. He says, you know what? I had shin splints almost all the way through training. And what I did is I had this unbelievable desire to make it, and I know because I had that extreme desire to make it. That's why Didn't I did. Matter. Right. Yeah. So I, I was like self healing or doing what I needed to do to make it. Just take that attitude. He took that attitude. He was like a E3 or something. He goes on to be an officer. Nice. Huge and all the way to the top. I mean, it was, it was pretty amazing. You know, so you, 
you start to, you can, you know, help guys get over that little hump, sure. you know, in the consciousness and, uh, and some guys, but some guys will never get there. Some guys who are like, like I said, have that amazing potential, but they don't take that consciousness leap. There's yeah. a lot of us. I mean, you see it today tremendously, you know, you see all like the rioting and the demonstration are going on. Yeah. These are people that have the potential to go into this beautiful state of consciousness, but are blaming everything exactly. and everyone else. Yep. So exactly. So they don't have to do the work. Exactly. So, it's all about, it's all about doing the work. Okay. I want to get right. like really crazy with you. And again, stop me. Uh-huh. How many times on missions did you think you were, it was, this was it? I, I'm done. Like how many times did that happen to you? Many times. What, what was so, the worst? Uh, so just, so, you know, as much as you can tell me, like, what was the mm-hmm. like craziest, like, holy, it's not going to happen. I'm, I'm good with it. I've, I've, I've decided this is the exit and I'm good. What was that? What was that story? Well, in training, I've had a lot of those times where like parachutes didn't open or I'm underwater and my air goes out. <laughs> you know? shoots don't and, open. And, and you just like, it's the same thing. Oh, you just, well. you, yeah. You just go in that state of consciousness, that calmness, you know, that calm state of consciousness. Like yeah. you said, like we were talking about earlier. It's yeah. like, yeah, I don't really, you know, if it happens, it happens. doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not a body. And I'm, I'm if, a spirit. If I, got, if I got all antsy, the, the, uh, the options and the thing that I needed to do would not come to me. Right. Exactly. It'd be exactly. gone. Yeah. But every time it's amazing. I got calm and then it's like, Oh, do this. And then I did that. And it was like, I lived. It was like, wow, that's cool. How that works. How many times did you actually have where your parachute didn't open? There was two, my parachutes. Wow. And I would say, probably a dozen times with uh, almost drowning. And then in combat, <laughs> like unbelievable amount of time. One of the worst ones I remember that, uh, that worked out good, fortunately. Uh, oh God, I could have a lot of them. And I could tell you, I could tell you one. That's Please like, dude, share. I mean, this is like so let me tell you one that's kind of like on the YouTube. peripheral that people can go, oh yeah, okay. And then it, so, <laughs> there was one time where we had gotten a call because I, I was in uh, Iraq. And I was in this compound and I basically uh, trained pretty much everybody in my compound, you know, and some of the guys knew that had these intuitive abilities, but some of them didn't and were working against me. So I was like, yeah, this is going to be hit or miss. So we knew that a group was coming to basically take us down a huge, huge group, kind of like a, like those guys that are in the, in Portland, like a yeah. huge riot group coming. Right. But these guys were armed and had rocket propelled grenades and, sure. you know, mortars and everything so i was like okay this is what we're going to do guys and then some guys you could see just like in you know like i was talking about in hell week where some guys just like stop and give up and some, in their guys eyes, like, right. some guys are like okay what do we need to do i'll do it so i had guys that like went into like uh buildings just disappeared <laughs> and then i had guys that like were went up and man man the walls so i got on the phone i had one of those this was back in 2003 uh had one of those cell phones, satellite sure, phones. The big know? giant, big, yeah. yeah. The, the, big, Michael, big the Michael, uh, what was it? Michael in uh, Wall Street, that film. Exactly. Yeah. One of those bad boys. So I, I call my <laughs> wife. I'm like, hey, babe, I love you. <laughs> you know, but I didn't tell her what was going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course, you know, because I'm thinking I, this is the last time I'm talking to you. I'm just Did she freak her. out, though, when she, knowing you what? called her from like a live mission? Was she freaked out? Well, she didn't even know. I'm just oh, telling her, clear. you know. Hey, I, man, call, I love you. Just check it in. Yeah. yeah, exactly. One of those things. So I'm in my mind, this is the last time I'm telling you, I love you, you know, but, uh, fortunately we had a jet. We called in a jet jet came in low. was letting them know, Hey, you come in, we're going to, we're going to blow it to kingdom come. And, uh, so they backed off. Wow. So that was one of those times. So you guys that. were supremely outmanned, obviously way, way. Yeah. And we've been probed many times and we beat them back. Um, but I, I was telling guys, okay, this is how we're going we're gonna to escape and evade. This is how we move. I was right, to- right. It was literally just like yeah. a desperation, like we're going to have to somehow evade and survive, right? Exactly. Now, the other one I was telling you about was they were mortaring us pretty much uh, every night. So eventually we started uh, counter-battering them. And I, that's a long story, but I talk about a little bit of my intuitive warrior. Um, right, I remember that part. Yeah, I got okay. it. Yeah. So I'm like doing my laundry. I got some guys on top of a uh, um, hospital that's looking out over the city. And we're like, yeah, usually uh, hit us by now. So you guys come on down, you know, get some sleep because we've got to move in the morning. So at least you get a little few hours of sleep. 
so they're they're coming down and i go to the laundry room which is just basically a wooden shack with some you know um wash machines and dryers in it sure so i'm like you know folding my clothes up and then it's like boom 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 and i was like oh shit and then i hear it like hit and they'd never gotten in our compound before this is the first time they'd gotten in our compound so the, i can hear it hit where um we had dominican republican uh guards on our wow. walls and it hit some of their trucks and i could hear them explode wow. and uh shrapnel <laughs> on, on the side of the building i'm like down underneath the table i'm like oh shit and i can hear them coming to my building boom and then shrapnel wow and it, and it started cutting to the wood and then i did one of those things like i talk about the uh influencing things i started praying and i started going i have a bubble surrounding me a bubble of love protecting me and and then it's, and then they stopped so wow. it's like that influencing thing that i had learned on a couple of other missions and that was a time where i used it to an unbelievable level and then i started like i talked about some other work imagine how much power team. intuitively that you had actually in that moment because you were really tapping into the field mm -hmm. Exactly. putting that out and again you know exactly. it's like my wife says this to me every day she's like all of us have such intuitive powers if only yeah. we are to unleash them but as you know yes. right you have to believe that you have those powers to unleash them oh yeah and then you start to attract to you the things that you want exactly so for me over time like i i had my kneecap shattered one time in a in a like an accident on a boat we were like recovering parachutes and the guy was driving too fast and guy standing behind me drove me into uh, a gun oh. mount and shattered my kneecap I, I reached out i could feel it in like five pieces Jesus Christ. So i was like oh my god so they eventually they, they patched me together they were like you're you're they not gonna walk glue, bro they use sim yeah was it the simtech glue i still have that i still have the uh pins and the wire around my kneecap but uh they're like yeah you're not gonna walk normal again and i'm like really oh no you don't know me yeah, exactly and, uh, so inch so six months later i'm passing the seal physical requirement test with an outstanding. That's so, insane, dude. Yeah. So that's the mental power that we have, you know, right. that we can overcome amazing things like you're talking about and you talk about it. A but lot. I mean, but it's true. And let's stay there for a second, you know, cause again, bro, and you know this better than me, but, and people need to understand what we're talking about right now, but we are not a body. We are a mm. spiritual, you know, divine essence, mm. being soul, whatever, you know, an orb of energy. Right. And that energy is animating this physical meat suit through conscious intent. Right. So your conscious intent was like, dude, I'm fucking Michael Jacob. This fucking knee, I'm going to rebuild it. Fuck that. I'm going to regenerate. It's going to be brand new. And I'll and give you even another story on that. Um, when I left, it was happened on the East coast and I was on the, I was on a West coast team. And uh, so they patched me up over there and they're like, when you get to the West coast, you know, go, go check in with those guys and let them know what's happening. They'll look at your records and then get you moving on like your, you know, uh, rehab and stuff like that. So I go in, I finally make it back. I go in, he looks at my knee and he's like, Oh my God. He's like, what did they do? And I'm like, what? And he's like, this thing is like off. If I'm gonna give you the week, because it was like Friday afternoon. I said, I'm gonna give you the weekend. If it's, you come back on Monday, if it still looks like this, I'm, I'm taking it out, putting in a false knee. Wow. I'm like, I'm like, Oh my God. So guess what I did? Yeah. You healed <laughs> I went, I went home and I have a, I mean, I'm into uh, all kinds of different spiritual practices, you know, and uh, I, I tap into divine, you of know, stuff. so I had a, had a guy that had uh, was a American Indian that was in, you know, did sweat lodges and sure. spiritual practices. And he gave me an Eagle feather that he had blessed on um, one of his, you know, crazy, uh, events that he did and uh so he says if you ever need anything really really bad use this so i took that feather and all weekend long i prayed you know and, and brushed it over my knee i came back uh, on monday and he's like oh my god this is do? a miracle <laughs> it's a miracle it's like perfect yeah so you know the consciousness when we tap into divine source yeah. and we understand that yes we are powerful, but we are just unbelievably powerful when we tap into that divine source and, and use that divine source for good. You know? My, my yeah. wife says, uh, I'm yeah. obviously I'm in a hundred percent agree with you. And th you know, this is really, 
the type of information that needs to get out into the world right now. Cause again, we all have such power to be able to do whatever we want on these fake bodies that we're imagining. But it's like my wife, mm-hmm. literally Michael, I swear to God, she imagines an army of helpers when she's injured who are literally blasting white healing light mm-hmm. into the injury. When we went to Machu Picchu last year, we were climbing, mm-hmm. um, I forgot what we were climbing, but she fell on a stairs at like a monastery, an ancient monastery. And she, mm-hmm slid down the stairs she hopped back up you know she's a crazy animal you know energetic bunny and i knew dude that she was hurt right oh, yeah. but I, I was just like babe are you okay and she's like oh, i'm fine i'm fine but when we got back home which was like 10 days later and i don't mm-hmm. know how she did this mm-hmm. but we went to see our cairo she was like in agonizing pain in the upper back and she thought she had like a severe subluxation knocked a rib out or whatever so he's like adjusting her and dude my wife is a beast she doesn't complain she's got high pain tolerance most women do as you know from childbirth but she literally could not move her back it was so such and so he's like dude i gotta give you an x-ray and he looked at it and she had literally done like three hairline fractures of all of the ribs in her spine she was rolling around like that for 10 days and machu picchu not even complaining it but Mm. he was like look there's nothing you can do you know you can take the peptides bpc and all that stuff whatever but you know just take give it rest and she's like no no no. we're gonna be on vacation i can't remember where we had to go somewhere in august with the kids i'm gonna heal it and that's what she did for five straight days she practiced for 45 minutes the focus of my healing group you know and i don't know if she thinks of them as angels i think she just thinks of them as people but they are literally focused on healing, light in the back. And dude, I swear to God, dude, literally in a week, completely, no pain, mm. no, t- gone. Like, I mean, I'm telling you, dude, she could not even get out of bed that morning when I took her to the chiropractor. And she was just like, I, it's a sub- really bad subluxation. My rib's out. And then when he saw it, he's like, it's not your rib, honey. He did an x-ray. And she had three hairline fractures, mm. which was yeah. you know, really bad. And I know where it was from. It was when she hit that goddamn thing and slid down those stairs but yeah, dude, I mean, it is absolutely proof that if your mind is powerful, and as you said, you are able to tap in to right here, man, you can, oh, yeah. you can literally heal yourself instantly. Yeah, and that's, that's what you did. Probably, I've been to Machu Picchu too, so I had priest lifetimes there, but she might have had a lifetime there, maybe some, some negative entity, like give her a little push. Is what without, without question, mm, dude. Yeah. Without question. Cool. And That's then, cool you same, guys got the experience, at least well, going yeah, same thing for me, though, like, you know, <clears throat> Machu Picchu, um, mm-hmm. the energy, that's, you know, completely transformed my being. And, oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, all of this, dude, was, is from there. I mean, this is all mm-hmm. a conscious choice of Jay Campbell not to be the testosterone, you know, optimization guy and be the consciousness guy. So that's why you and I are probably really connecting right now. But, okay, so I want to go. And, yeah, look, and, and I wanted to segue into that real quick. Please, please. Because do. just what you were just saying there is I've watched your stuff in the past and I'm getting ready to go on that, that journey too with the testosterone sure. replacement treatment. And um, uh, I wanted the best and I'm an intuitive guy and I know where to get the best. And I've always done that. So thank you. Cause I was just, <laughs> I was just thinking, I'm ready for this. And then you called me and like, Oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> and now I even got you meeting with two amazing people who are literally not going to do anything beautiful. other than what, Oh, they've learned God. from me. So yeah, dude, it's all perfect. But, all right. You, so, so ba- of course, man, thank you. But, um, so, okay. So the end of your, you're at the end of seals, you know, you're not even coaching. You're, you, you've gotten out. Like what has happened to you now looking at the planet? Because like you said something on, you know, that was really profound to me on Monday night. And that's kind of where I want to go with this from here on. And I don't care how long it goes. This is so epic, but like, um, until you say, dude, I got to go. Oh, no, I, I, do have, I do have a podcast at five, but we're I, good. You got plenty of time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and you got your own stuff too. But no, but like you said something that really piqued my curiosity. And you said, hey, man, it's only been recently, Robert and Jay, that I'm allowed to say what I'm saying. Right? Okay, so, yeah. so the veil has thinned to the point now where like even the powers that be, whoever they are, and, you know, we can talk about who they are, what we think they are. But what really has happened right now? And again, I don't even think this is an opinion question for you. I think this is a knowing because you're so tapped into people at higher channels of what's going on on this planet. What mm-hmm. happened that you can now talk freely about what you know to be pretty much, you know, what is? Even, even about this. I mean, I've talked about what we're just the stuff we're talking about right now on the consciousness level. And I got shut down on some stuff. 
But what happened was when Trump came in, basically he started pushing back on the deep state like they had no idea was coming. They thought they had the, uh, the election in the bag. Now, when Trump came down, the escalator with Melania. Right. Because up to, up to that point, I was like, I'm going to have to leave. I'm going to have to leave the United States. <laughs> I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to leave. And, I, and I'm thinking, where am I going to go? And Costa Rica, you know, where, where I'm going. I know I got some, some cool people down there. So uh, I was like, uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna have to escape. I'm going to have to leave because it's going to get bad. I don't know what's going on. But then I started to feel some, something, something's happening because um, – all of the generals had gotten together one time and I was like, those guys are going to coup it. They're going to coup it. I know right. it. And I, but they didn't. I was like, what happened? But something was, was, was changing and I could feel it. And then when he came down the escalator, I was like, he's going to win. He's going to win. And there's like all these other psychos. Like, I don't know. But I was like, I knew right. he was right. going to win. Right. And uh, I mean, I even like, there's this one, one site predicted where you can like, you know, bet on who's sure. going to win. So he sure. was he had low odds, you know, so I, I got a lot of money off that. That was good. That's I, needed awesome, it. I needed it at the time. It was good because they crushed my life. They friggin' destroyed oh, I me. can only imagine. Yeah. I was, I was a multimillionaire. I was living like an unbelievable lifestyle. And, and once I started to reveal some of this information, they destroyed me. And so anyway, um, I was like, okay, it's going to change. It's changing. It's coming. So once he won, it was that from that point on, I started watching. Now, you know, went to Saudi Arabia and he was like dancing around with a sword. He was the king. Yeah. Because like, what he was doing, he was exposing the pedophilia. Right. So just now we're starting to hear about the pedophilia, but he, they knew. Yeah, of course. Now, now I knew, and a lot of us know about this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Now you'll even remember like when he went to uh, Bush Sr.'s funeral and he showed up late. To diss them, and uh, the all you might have seen the stuff where they're all getting like these letters. Oh yeah, looking at them like, oh shit. Oh, what is but this? It was, yeah, it was basically like um, we know. See, yeah, senior senior had basically written them and said, "I told him everything. Sorry." <laughs> wow. Oh yeah. So uh, he had them, and uh, I was like, "Wow, that's cool." So you start to see things. So I started looking at things. There was a time where Bush Jr. came and served his his uh, protection detail pizza. Wow! You know, you know about the pizza stuff, right? Of course, yeah, of course. Pizza is the pedophilia stuff. Yeah, pizza. Right? Yeah, yeah so they had their little you know things they say to each other and they joke about it in front of our faces and stuff. So like that. sick. Pretty sick, yeah. So he's ba so I was when he did that, I was like, oh my god, because we had I was part of details like that, and we had to put up with the bullshit. We had to put up with the pedophilia. Well, let me ask you something about that because this is, and, and we're really going crazy now, but I have read from guys, and again, I have no verification of sources. I've just read stories of guys like you through other people, you know, on internet sites that Bush Sr. was the worst of he all. Was they, yeah, I've heard. Um, <laughs> Clinton, Hillary, bad too. Dude, I read an account from a Secret Service agent right. who said that they were serving up three or four six-year-old boys a night to Bush Sr. And he would, of course, you know, rape them, pedophilia, whatever, and then kill right. them. Yep. And then that, 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 that's what they were doing. And that's what, you know, remember Boys Farm in Washington, not Washington, D.C., in Nebraska or whatever. Remember they did the big story on it. All of these kids were disappearing from that orphanage and being channeled through everything. But it's just, it's all so crazy to talk about this because, again, how can people in America think that United States presidents were involved in this? Let me ask you a question because you've heard it. We all heard it. It's so obvious. It's probably going to be coming out. This is being taped on July 23rd. 2020 when this runs it's not going to be that long i'm not going to make you wait that long a lot of guys are going to the back of the line but at some point and we talked about this on the show on monday night is this going to be michael revealed to everyone that this is what has been going on yeah because basically what they've been <clears throat> what trump's been doing like i told you about with uh saudi arabia yes he also went to israel so right. you know they moved the uh the consulate yep or the the you know um embassy Yep. Jerusalem. They hadn't been able to do that for exactly decades and decades. Everybody's been talking about doing it. So look what's in the middle of Jerusalem, USA. 
So it's now there where it's supposed to be. Right. So we go through, I mean, you go to the UK where he walked in front of, uh, you know, the, the royalty. Yep. So he's basically, he's, he's owned them. So you go through country after country after country after country. And that's what he's doing. He went to the Vatican and you can see the Pope, the Pope's like, mm -hmm, and, and Trump's like, you know, right. beaming. So he's, he's basically served them all up. He served them all up with, you know, we got, we got the information on you. We got the pedophilia information on you. So the elite are all into this as, as a lot of people. Literally every single out. one, dude. Pretty much. Now, some of them have been forced. Right. Brainwashed, uh, right? I've heard, dude, I've heard the stories. They literally will kidnap right. them under cover of gun, bag them, bag, put a bag over there, take them into the forest and then make them like kill somebody and they videotape it and they say, look, if you ever say anything. Yeah. You're done. So they're they're yeah. guilty too. It doesn't matter. But, the, but there's some that are like, no, but they're forced to like, uh, uh, let it go. Kind of like what I'm talking, like a lot of us, you know, secret service and sure. you know, special forces types to see some of this stuff on the backside, non-disclosure agreements that we have to sign. If, we, if you give that stuff up to destroy you. And that's some stuff that I started to reveal, like I said, basically yeah. destroy my life. But I'm like, hey, I signed a non-disclosure agreement for like, top secret stuff that kept our country safe right. not for this kind of bullshit. Not for yeah. you pieces of shit. Yeah. So do they, do they also threaten you or do, could they, or would they threaten your life too? Cause yeah, they'll throw you out and fuck you up financially, but do they threaten your families or any shit like that? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've seen it over and over again where they, where they're taking uh, whole families. I mean, you saw it just recently with that yeah. judge, Jesus Christ, you know, dude. killed her son and our, her husband. So our wounded her husband. My so wife I, even mentioned that to me yesterday. She goes, did you hear the story about that judge? And I was like, where did you, cause she doesn't pay attention to the news. And she's like, somebody sent it to me through Facebook. And I was reading, I was just instantly thought of you. And I was like, yeah, dude, it's cause it wasn't he what the son of Epstein or, or how was it related to Epstein or something connected to the Epstein deal? Right? Yeah. She was uh, investigating Dutch bank, which is right. basically right. Been, uh, right. money laundering exactly. uh, money for um, yeah. Epstein. Pedophilia. Yeah. Yeah. Pedophilia. So, I mean, all the banks are pretty much, uh, you know, going down well that's what you and i yeah i mean that's what you and i were talking about with robert on monday night is that you know mm. people don't even realize the federal reserve doesn't even exist the federal reserve has already been usurped by the u.s treasury which trump has the power to print the deep state money and it's just now being blasted out right everywhere right, right. now just to burn through it yeah and, and uh, yeah they they, 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 they tried to <clears throat> kill me a few times so uh, i could give you story after story after story but one of them that's pretty profound, I was talking to uh, Robert about this earlier. He was showing me his helicopter stuff that he sure. was involved with, you know. So I was like, oh, was that helicopter not marked? He's like, yeah. And did it not have any lights? And he's like, yeah. And were, was the glass like blacked out so you can see inside? He's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I had one of those too. So I was on the Pacific Crest Trail. Wow. And um, so I'm kind of like out ahead. There was no one because, you know, I'm a high achiever. So sure. <laughs> I was like in the front. And uh so there was no one around. And I remember there was this one spot I'm coming up to and I saw these guys coming off the trail. I'm like, well, that's weird. And they looked kind of military. And I was like, wow, you know, there, well, there's kind of Marine base must be close to here, you know? So I just kind of blew it off, you know? So I'm, I'm going down this trail and this was the only place I've seen on the whole trail where there's barely enough space that you can walk on this little trail that's along the side of a cliff. And if you were to fall, you would fall thousands of feet and never be recovered. Bye -bye. Probably. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm in the middle of this thing and, you know, I have that intuition thing. I'm like, they're coming to check me out. And then I hear a helo. Wow. And I was like, oh, they're going to come. And I'm just going to like, you know, smile at them. So they came up and they're like hover right, right off from where I'm at. And they're hovering there. I'm like, you know, a smile. I didn't wave because I was like, you know, it's kind of obvious. You know, they're obviously here for me. But I, I, I figured they're just like scoping me out. And then I feel my heart go. Whoop. Oh, wow. I was like, heart attack machine. I went, so I like, you know, have these abilities, you know, with my energy and stuff. So I like pushed it and I'm pushing it. And they're like hovering and they're hitting me with it. And I'm, just, I'm still walking. I'm like, I got to get out of here. So then they like, they give up. They go up and down, make sure it's clear. They come back. They do it three times. They hit me with this thing. I'm like, man, I, I, I'm good. You know, I'm resisting this thing, but I don't know how long I can keep doing this. Yeah. So eventually I get off that little cliff area and I just like 
when they went to like look and see if everything was clear, I ditched it, went deep, made myself like, you know, I have this ability that we talked about sure. going invisible. And I went invisible and I just like, just laid low. It got dark. I, I was off trail for a long way. And then, you know, then they sent some teams after me. So yeah, it was a little cat and mouse for me for a while, but eventually, you know, they've given up. Still try to destroy my life every, every now and then, but now it's all stopped. Nothing so yeah, that, okay. So that's where I'm going deep now on that. So yeah. why, and obviously it's opinion, but I mean, is it because their reign is over? Are we guessing? Like where, what, what's happening? Yeah. So they're going after, uh, you know, so I'm not as great of a threat to them because they, they could like, you know, push to little guys like me, you know, yeah. I feel like I'm just a, a little guy, but I'm still a threat to them. But they like to set examples, you know, they like to like, look, it doesn't matter who you are, just like they did try to do with the judge. Sure. You know, they're still trying to do things here and there to show that they're still in charge, but it's like their, their ability to do that is, you know, becoming few and far between. But just like I talk about, you know, cutting the head off a snake, yeah. it still can bite your ass, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that tail, because it's a big tail, can whip around and like whipsaw you and kill you too. So you have to be, so they cut the head off like a lot of the guys, like we talked about. Trump's gone around and said, okay, we got the, we got the dirt on you guys. And uh, so you're going to have to like play along with us. And I think some of them, they've actually been taken out. Right. I'm pretty, I, I know they have. And, yeah. uh, but they, people are waiting for them to do that, do the public thing. It's not going to happen because the deep state controls the public still or the public uh, media still. The perception. Uh, yeah, they control yeah. the perception. Well, you know, to that mm -hmm. point, and just to echo, to mm -hmm. add this in there, you know, Robert sent us those two articles yesterday on cloning. I mean, come on. Uh, At this point. Amazing. It's so obvious that cloning has been around since the right. fallen angels, mm -hmm. you know, we're cloning beings in the beginning. They're always oh, yeah. been through time. You know, now we're seeing what they call deep fake, right? Like I saw a video today, bro, where they, they can now literally, they have technology. And again, I'm sure it's ancient, but they're just showing it to us now where they can take a movie and replace the actor. Have you seen this? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, we Fuck, just saw I it. saw, I saw oh, the silence horrible. and layers. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Silence of the Lambs, it was Anthony Hopkins replaced with the other guy, whatever his name is, like in the same scene. And I'm like, it's wow. the fucking same shit. Wow. So dude, anyway, that technology, yeah. what you're saying is proof. Mm -hmm. They have replaced the bad guys. They have, have literally, as you have shown me, body doubles, fakes, all sorts of things, like literally in the public perception right now, like Hillary Clinton. I mean, but you know, and again, you know, as we were talking about Monday night, these people, people today are so programmed and so asleep that they don't even know. Like you and me, Robert, people like us are, you know, people that work with you, we see it like plain as day, like, holy fuck, you, you can't see that's not Hillary Clinton. And people are like, Whoa. so it's like so many people are turned off that right. they're still able to get away with everything now. Although the people that are awake, the fruit were like, what the? Yeah. But you know, there's more people waking up. Oh no, no, no. And that, that's what's unbelievably beautiful. And that's powerful too, because yes. you no, know they want to like, you know, decrease population. The reason why they want to do that is because when we're in abundance like this, like when we hit that 3 billion and above mark, yep. that's when they got concerned. So right. we're like almost 8 billion now. Right. So our consciousness level links now, like you and I, right. like, yes, you know, us coming together. hundred um, percent. Yeah. All these different people are like, you know, like you sh show me the one guy's email. Oh my God. That's just amazing. So all these people are really sparking, coming alive, coming, yeah. coming awake yeah. and, and just yeah. really the consciousness is blowing up. So more of us that link like this, and this is the thing that I learned when I was in combat zones, I could come into a combat zone. And like I was telling you about the bubble that I had yeah, in, in the little love bubbles that I was yeah. in, yep. I started doing that around the whole towns and there were no attacks. And then I'll relieve there'd be an attack. And I was like, how do I keep that up? And then I started thinking, oh, it just came to me, you know, intuitively link with the people there right. that don't want these attacks. And then I started linking with them. I powered them up. They didn't even know, I didn't know them, but we're all subconsciously linking with each other. And that's what's happening right now. So when I would leave, it would be months before there were no attacks and then eventually never attack in that house in that, in that area again. So okay, that's so, what's happening now. With so us. how do we, you and me, people like us, especially people watching this podcast, cause I want to spend the last 10 or 15 minutes before we end the show, which has been amazing. Um, and obviously, like I told you, dude, like on Monday night, like 
me and you and Robert are going to be doing way more stuff together. Cause like, again, oh, the yeah. feedback that I'm getting awesome. from people, I mean, bro, you were, you you woke people up. I mean, there are people now that were like ex-military as I sent you that message today. There are people mm -hmm. that are like, Holy shit. Listening to Michael say this, like, it opened like waves that I had shut down, you know, and, oh, and good, I wanted good. to ask you about that because I yeah. know, you know, how often do they who control the military, right? At the highest levels, how often are they actually actively clockwork oranging people like you, like literally on missions and shit like that? Can, can they regularly do that? Oh yeah. Yeah. A lot of us are, are fairly programmed. And, um, so like I would, I would be at SEAL team six. <laughs> All right, I, I, not here it comes. Here we go, going down the down the rabbit hole. So I'm hey, if, the, if the transmission <laughs> goes out, people, I'm just letting you know. And uh, and guys would like, they'd have like that far away look, you know. And these are like the hundred guys. yard stairs, the hundred yard, yard stairs, stair. and they're getting all their gear together. And they're like all rushing. I'm like, what's going on, you know? <laughs> and then they disappear, and they'd be gone for like weeks, sometimes more than a month or even months and then they come back and they bring all the gear put it away and they'd be like just like just like normal i'm like are you gonna you guys gonna tell us anything and they wouldn't they wouldn't talk they wouldn't tell us anything i'm like <sighs> whoa what just happened there you know and, but, but, uh, but, did, but did you notice like a time stoppage is it a time slip are they able to literally slip into time or when they create this like brain mm -hmm. I mean, what's really happening? I know it's opinion, but like, what are they doing when they can program a person like that? It's, I mean, there's so many different levels of this. I mean, we could go into the secret space program, you know, yeah. that I'm involved in, you know, we yeah. haven't really touched that yet, but um, there's consciousness levels that they understand that are pretty much beyond most of us. Right? right. But you and I are starting to wake up to it. Right. So once we wake up to it, they don't have control there anymore. Right. And they don't like that. That's why they tried to take me out so many times, but and why so they got like rid of basically me. again, and you've already said this, they use Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So Inception, it's the fucking Inception movie, right? It's totally, the stoppage totally. of time, and then they come in, and then that, that's how they institute the programming, correct? Literally, literally, yeah. They can come in and um, like some guys are like you know, MK Ultra, you know, they have they have programs in them, and they get activated and they go off and do stuff, you know. And they have no conscious recollection at all, at all, right? They really don't. They really don't. Because I, I wanted to ask those guys. And, and sometimes I would, I would like kind of mention something and they, they wouldn't even answer. It's like I hadn't even asked them. Now, whether it was they're like in, because I've been involved in like super top secret stuff that only sure. a handful of people will know ever. And, um, you know, I know how to keep quiet about that. But if I, I would, all I would have to say is one or two key words to someone else. And they'd be like, oh, you're part of that too. They'd know. They'd be activated, you know, and they could go and do stuff. So I know how this stuff works on, on certain levels. And, uh, you know, as a military guy, you're like, you obey, you know, you learn who to obey, right, of course. <laughs> you know, right. and uh, you don't question a lot of, you know, a lot of the stuff. Now, Eventually, I started getting to the point where, especially in the CIA, I was like looking at stuff and I'm like, hmm, and if I would just say one thing, I would get one of those reptilians that's in charge yeah. that would turn around, look at me, and I get the slit eyes, and, and they give me that angry energy. I'm like, hey, don't worry. I'm not going to say anything. We're good. Yeah, we're good. I mean, I could take you if I wanted to, but you know, <laughs> I'll let you play. I, I'll, I'll play this game to see where it goes. <laughs> I'll learn. And then come back and take you out. So what, what is this? So what is the percentage we're doing right now with this conversation? We're crushing them with this conversation. Bro, this is, I mean, literally, ripley, dude, like all the hairs. <laughs> you all know, my arms are <laughs> yeah. standing on the back exactly. of my neck. I mean, I, we're, let's just keep going. So, because mm -hmm. I asked you on Monday night. So, yes, they're at the top of the, the top of the, of every institution and platform they are there. But what is the percentage of them, like, you know, the reptiles, these seraphic mm -hmm. reptilian lord hosts, right? Because right, they're, right. they're the mass, as, as, as P, the great Pierre Sabak, who's decoded all of this shit, he says that they have literally control, like the fallen angels in the movie, right? Fallen, they're jumping from body to body. Time is on my, I know. they literally oh. have control over our physical vessels, right? Like you and I, 
we're like you just said we're slowly waking up to know that we're not our bodies we're our spirit but these fuckers can just jump from body to body and overtake our consciousness yeah so that's that's beautiful you bring that up because what we're talking about right now raising your consciousness is part of going forward and keeping them from doing that. Because, right, when you get here, bro, they had no they, they, they're, And they know that. They don't like that. That's why they keep us in fear. That's why they try exactly. and keep, keep us in right fear, because then they have control of us. And not just control of us, like, well, you know, they won't control me through the media. Dude. They're making they, them protest. They will, they will I've seen them jump. Like you're talking about, ta, they jump in bodies. I've seen Dude, it. I know. I mean, I, like, I no. take people out with my consciousness. I took, I took Zark five or six different terrorists out because I went after them with my consciousness. Yeah. I looked at them. I was like demon. And then I started sending it love, sending it the demon love. Yeah. yeah. And that conscious energy of that being that it was inhabiting could have pushed it away at that point, but they liked it. They invited it in and then they died with it. So that's the way it works. So do you, do you that's think why they saw important. it as a challenge though? Do you think they see it as a challenge? Like this puny human is attempting yeah. to do this to me and then they get caught up and then they just go down because we're not puny humans, right? Like when we get here, we have amazing powers of intuition, oh, yeah. as you say. Because when I, when I went to uh, look at Kim Jong-un, when I looked at his demon, his demon like looked at me and was like scared. So it was the first time I saw a demon was actually scared. So as we know, Kim Jong-un is gone. So I and my, my remote viewing team that, I, that I've trained basically looked and we saw him dead. And we saw his sister taking over. And his sister has come out a couple times. And literally uh, said she's possessed by demons too, right? Exactly. So I'm working, I'm working on her now. So, uh, so you'll either see her go she's away. She's literally admitted. Exactly. She's got some weird religion all these people follow her and her demon or her, a gin whatever she calls it that comes out yeah dude i read that one day and i was like this has got to be made up and then it's just again dude the matrix see? yeah i mean it's in our, they're in our face with it They'll tell so us. so so yeah. when trump is over there after he's already gone and you know the body double that he's taking pictures with and all this stuff does trump know he has to know right well i it wasn't then you know it was like uh after that is when he died so they were like you know the coronavirus is like, you know, not a big deal in North Korea at all. It's like, right, really? Right. Yeah. So, and, and then uh, they show How come they don't have any cases in North Korea, Michael? <laughs> exactly. So uh, <laughs> they had, they remember they actually showed on the news his body. Right. They showed it. Yeah, and no, they, absolutely. Oh, no, no, like, he's, he's alive. And then they showed a picture of him like, you know, walking around. That was an old, old video. No, absolutely. Or, deep state. Or it was, was uh, or it was a body double. And they've actually looked at, uh, I think one or two of his body doubles and you can, and they point out all the differences in the, in the facial features and everything. So, yeah. All right. So listen, we're going to have another one about, we'll talk about the secret space program, whatever you can oh, say. Yeah, Let's cool. just, just give me in the last five minutes or so, I'll just ask you, you know, not yes or no, but tell me what you think. So obviously again, we got four months until the election. We know that from November 2nd till March 13th, Jupiter, and um, Uranus are like in this really bad fixed position. We're going to be in darkness. We know shit is going to go down. You've already told people if you're living in big cities, your ass should get out of the big cities. You're not safe, especially the blue check cities. I mean, I'm one of those people. Clearly, I'm not in the city, but I'm close enough. Mm. What should people do? You know, again, because I'm going to run this right away. In your opinion, obviously not to be in fear, but is it safest just to be where you're at, you know, have food, have water, have guns, ammunition, whatever, just to be ready? Um, or should you, do you think people should start moving now? Because as I told you, it's really tough now if you're in Southern California to move to where you are, right? To go to Tahoe or to go to Reno or to go to Flagstaff. Dude, they're insane. Everyone is leaving the cities to get there and you can't find anything. But so what do you tell people to do knowing that right now? Yeah. I, I just keep, I just got to keep reiterating because I think it's, it's even deeper and maybe we can talk about that in more detail the next time we talk. Sure. But there's even more things that are happening on a, uh, a physical earth change type level. Right. Right. Because someone alluded to that actually in our last, in our conversation the other sure. night, asked us about geological positions. And I was yes. like, Oh, he's, he's like tapping into something there. Yes. So geologically you might be in a bad location. 
So, you know, a lot of the um, geo, or not geo, but the um, uh, uh, nuclear uh, production sites are on fault lines. Right. So we got to keep that in mind. So I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> maybe they knew something was coming in the future and they want to like make sure they start taking a lot of people out. So take that in mind. Right. So I say, trust your intuition. I would exactly. say high ground mountainous areas is probably going to be the best bet going forward, you know, but use your own intuition. If you feel that you're in a safe area, maybe you really are. Maybe you have your family around you. You're already maybe in high ground away from the coast or whatever, you know, I'm not saying anything specific right now. I just sure. want to give people a broad idea right. of trust your intuition. And uh, if you're really feeling the call to leave, which I and a lot of other people yeah, have done, of course. Uh, then, then they go. But if you feel that you're in a good location, like maybe you're in a good location, maybe you're in a little bit higher area away from the big city. We're, we're, we're at 1600. I'm at 1600 feet. I'm at 1600 feet. That's right. good. That's good. That's but good. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm in the San Gabriel Valley canyons, but I'm not, nice, I'm not nice. in Big Bear. I'm not, you know, where you're at. I'm not like protected with all the military where Robert is, but I mean, I don't know. We could talk about that another time, but okay. No, so I think gonna, you might be all right, actually. Okay. No, I, I always thought that. It's yeah. like you said, the, you know, I'm not in a place, you know, mm. I'm, I'm in a very safe neighborhood, obviously too, but Excellent. like good. everybody has weapons. Like the guy across the oh, street yeah. from me has you, like you six ARs, good. you know? So I mean, right. but so that's the next question. Like, should we be concerned about a, you know, asteroids, meteors, you know, obviously we're seeing these emails. Do you think, I mean, we both, obviously it's a knowing that Trump is going to be reelected. Although I think you were saying that there's a possibility that he could cancel the election if they light everything on fire. Um, right. What do you think happens assuming Trump gets reelected or, you know, main, re remains the president or whatever with the deep state, are they ultimately going to be mostly routed? Are we going to have a quote unquote, you know, golden age coming? What, what happens in your opinion? I know it's an opinion question. Yeah, there's definitely a golden age, but like we were talking before the show, there's a consciousness shift that's happening and more. I've, I've been saying this for a very long time and more and more psychics are starting to wake up for it because they're like, we all thought that we're all going to rise together, but now we're seeing oh. that's not going to happen. And I'm like, thank you. Start to put that out there because people are like, you know, trying to pull and force people that do not want to ascend in consciousness. Right. Sleepers don't, are not going anywhere, Michael. They're let them, on let their them own. Lie. They've chosen, yeah. just like Robert said, they've chosen yeah. the path of yeah. dissonance. And they're allowed to, right? We're not, it's not our job to pull them out. We're, you and I right here are giving them the option to awaken. Exactly. The, the information is unbelievable right now. It's never been at this Unheavy, level. Unheavy, man. Yeah, ever. Never been at this level. Never. Ever in, in our conscious history here on Earth. Agreed. Except for maybe another time, but very, very ancient. So now we're, we're rising to that point again. We're not going to be stopped out. It's not going to happen because there's very good forces that are helping us. Very positive forces, right? And I'm not just talking about like, divine energies i'm also right. talking about alien forces well. yeah right exactly i was going to say interdimensionals and you know we'll yes. when we get into the, the secret space program and you talk about hyperdimensional beings and whatnot you know oh, we yeah. can talk we can talk about all those that's but, gonna be a great show so then yeah, no. um <laughs> i mean this has been a phenomenal show so then just to close the podcast mm -hmm. you know just me and jake the jay campbell michael jaco one-on-one interview um what, what what would you tell somebody you know right now because most of the people that watch my show are not in fear, right? Like we've already conditioned them to be sovereign, empowered, free. But what would you tell somebody right now that's a little bit shaky? You know, they just mm -hmm. wa they watched this interview with me and you. They watched the Monday night interview with me and Robert. They know that there's fallen angels. They know that like, you know, we're in a holy war. And we're mm -hmm. at the, like, as Robert said to me today, he said, he said, basically, we are in the final phase this is the right. final event right of the battle what would you say to those people to keep them strong to keep them like fervent that good is going to prevail and that that's beautiful that's so, that's such a perfect setup because that consciousness of not having the doubt because imagine me going through seal training if i had just a little bit of a doubt i'd be gone not making it and i saw it over and over so you want to be like the special forces guy in the future <laughs> and that's that's women too so that's basically what we're doing. No doubt. You can't have the doubt because that pulls your consciousness down. It's going to make you vulnerable. So everything we talked about, you know, today, it should lift you. It should give you like that little extra oomph because that's what's happened, you know, 
you know, the other times that we talk. And so as we go upward in consciousness, come along for the ride. It's going to be beautiful. Keep that positive out outlook. It's, it's amazing. So right now, if people want to work with you, because obviously you coach people, they want to connect with you better. Like what's the best way they can do that? So I have a uh, website. It's where all my teachable stuff is. It's unleashing dash teachable or I'm sorry, unleashing dash intuition one dot teachable dot com. Beautiful. Go there. Yeah. And then, you know, you're, you're, you're on, you have a Twitch stream, right? You're all like on a, you have a Twitch URL where you do videos. Twitch, yeah. Same thing. Twitch TV, unleashing intuition. Now I, I have to ask you this and I've never asked you this. So this is new for me too. Like you pretty much have been shut down by all the other social media channels, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's amazing, man. I mean, honestly, Everybody dude, I mean, you already down, know this, man. like, every, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like every day my social media company is like, well, you know, this might be it. I, I mean, you may not be I, working I with me, I, I but I tell them, I, I tell them I have such amazing team now. I'm like, Good. no, if they shut me off Twitter or delete me off YouTube, then we're just going to go to wherever it be, would be Twitch parlor, whatever it has to be. We'll there just keep evolving. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Good. Yeah. That's the way I feel too. Awesome. Cause uh, you know that YouTube went away and I'd worked so hard at it. It was building so fast and I was getting some really good response from it. And I was like, where do I go now? And then uh, fortunately my son is like a, you know, guru with this stuff. He's like, I'll, I'll hook you up in Twitch. I'm like, okay, great. So next day I'm doing Twitch. So and That's so right awesome, now. Dude. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's good. Awesome, man. Well, listen, dude, like I said, I have a profound love in my heart for you. Like, I, it's just, I feel like just we're like friends from like God knows how long in the past and we've reunited. Absolutely. I just, the energy that we are creating together is just insane, dude. So, <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, like, again, thank you for coming on. We'll do the next one literally next week. We'll do part two and I'll rush this to the deal. Okay. Um, everybody, of course, su support the amazing people. One of the most amazing people that's ever come on my show. Uh, and that's saying a lot. Um, please go to his website um, through Twitch or obviously go to his teachable courses, which is unleashing dash intuition dot teachable dot com. Correct. Awesome. Got it. I got it, man. Well, again, dude, man, <laughs> seriously, thank you, man, for coming All on. Right. And obviously, guys. Lo love you, Jay. And, and your you audience, too, lots of love to your audience, too. So. No, of course, man. And, and uh, again, you guys support Michael, but remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys next week.